Hello friend, it's Mark out on the back 40. And in this episode, it's been three weeks since we've put the fall food plot seed in. And I'm just out here kind of checking it out and I'll bring you up to date on how we're doing. All right, so I am out in the same food plot that we've pretty much been doing all of our experiments in since day one, well, really since last year. And um, if you can hear that tractor running, <laughs> Uh, it's because I'm breaking my self-imposed rule that I do not go on the property after Labor Day. That's, that's uh, you know, when you have a small property, it's just 42 acres here, and there's a lot of pressure like there is here in Michigan. Um, I, I, it, I, you just don't want to go out on the property because um, when the bucks are shedding their velvet, their whole attitude is changing. Everything is changing. And so they're trying to find more like their fall core area that they're going to hang out in for breeding season. And uh, I don't want to give them any reason for it not to be on my property. And uh, coming out here and putting my stink all over and bumping them around if I'm walking uh, gives them an excuse to leave. And I don't want to take all those away. So when I come out and do something like this, uh, I always come out in my tractor. And because uh, it has puts diesel smell out and it's not me walking. So it's the rubber tires on the ground other than me walking out here in this food plot right now. And then I leave it running, it's running right now, so that they're used to that sound, it doesn't bother them. Hopefully it kind of keeps them calm. So anyways, let's talk about food plots. And because we're doing two experiments, right? Number one experiment is converting all the food plots to no-till and kind of the benefits or cons, pros and cons of that. And the second experiment is planting um, seeds into a no-till food plot. What's the best way to do it? And we're, we've, we've been experimenting on this channel with a grain drill, not a no-till drill, but just a plain old grain drill uh, to drill into this food plot because it's light sandy soil. You know, no-till drills are much more expensive than grain drills, like 10 grand more probably. And so what I'm trying to do is get away with just a, a grain drill, which cost me about three grand. You can get a used one for probably one or two grand and uh, still be able to do no-till because it's only four acres out here. So my, my whole life I'm going to buy a grain drill, probably plant 100 acres the rest of my life, God willing, I'm alive for another 20 or 30 years. And um, it, so I don't need a brand new $15,000, $20,000 drill to plant 100 acres over the next 20 years. So uh, that, anyways, that's kind of my thought on that. So. So how, how are we doing? Experiment number one, um, I'll kind of go over a few, <clears throat> I did a few intervals, a few different weeks of updates. So let's go over that a second right now. All right, today is the 26th. We planted this last Saturday and today is Thursday. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, th day five. And right here you can see already, right here's the groove that the drill put in. And you can see we're getting germination here. So there, I mean, it's only day five, so you gotta, there's a couple grains coming up there. There's a little bitty one right there. So if you just kind of follow that groove right there. And then if I come over here, here's some too. Yeah, yeah, right here. I don't know if you can see the groove in this video or not but there is stuff in there starting to germinate so yeah and there's another one in the groove right there yeah you can see all this little stuff going can you believe that day five that this is happening on day five already so um 75 percent chance of rain tonight so that'll really get things to take off so this stuff was planted in you know it was dry we haven't had good rain in two over two weeks but that drill got through all the all the thatch and still germinated. Look at this, a pea right here. I'll be dinged. Look at that. <laughs> pea germinated, and yeah, you can see the stuff there. So all right, enough, right? So even after five days with no rain, the uh, in sand, when I drilled it in underneath all the thatch, it germinated. So it appears to be working. Now we'll just give it time and see. If in all these rows, we just see germination like crazy. God willing, it rains tonight. Like I said, 75% chance of rain. So I hope that that'll really beat stuff in and uh, get them all moist and get everything germinated. 
It has been two weeks since we drilled seed into this food plot. Uh, it's also important for you to know that th it's been at least three weeks since we got rain. It might even be four weeks now. We've got no rain. So we drilled the seed into the sand and look, it is germinating. I'm amazed that it's germinating because we've had no rain, like I said. And, but I think what's happening with the no-till, and I'm just gonna pick a spot here. You can see how the drill drilled through some of the thatch here, here. And then when you pull the thatch back, you see it's moist. That would never, never in a million years have happened back when I was rototilling and cultipacking and spreading and cultipacking and putting seed on. This would be bone dry. So I could have sprayed, spread all this on when I rototilled. And based on how dry it is right now, it would have been like dust. None of this stuff would have germinated. And if it did germinate by chance, it would be burned up already. But let me look what's happening now because we've been going no-till, you've got the cover on the soil, so it's moist. So even though we haven't got rain in over two weeks, this stuff still all germinated. I mean, look at that. So that is really, really encouraging. And I mean, I can see some faint, you see a faint line where the um, drill has drilled through the thatch and uh, put, you know, put rows in there. So, I mean, I'll just kind of, scope around here i mean it's only been two weeks so um i'll get an update again as we keep going to see how it goes i'm really looking forward to seeing what happens to it when as soon as rain hits it how much more it's going to take off but uh i'm really encouraged that i can even think about here we are um september 4th that we even have anything germinating growing i'm i'm amazed this just would not have happened before i started the no-till thing a couple years ago so I'm encouraged. Um, I, what I'm maybe a little disappointed in is you can see like this area right here is really, really thick. I mean, look at this. And it looks like when I mowed it, everything's laying this way. And then when I planted, the discs were going this way and I'm not seeing anything germinating in this area and really, really thick thatch like this. So the drill is not able to cut this stuff. Plus it was still half green. I mean, I, I mowed it and then I hit it with Roundup and a week later I planted. So it was still kind of soft. So it couldn't cut through that stuff. But it, well, I mean, in that, but look at this, here's a perfect example though. But see this stuff right here? See how the, the grain of all the thatch is going this way, the same direction the drill is going and it did drill through there. Yeah, and there's a row going right through there. So the moral of the story is you have to lay everything down the same direction that the discs are gonna go in the drill. Then it'll be able to separate this stuff instead of going across it, you can't cut it, you go with it and instead of cutting it, it's just separating it and getting the stuff down in there. So there you go, there's the key. Okay, so you've seen the, the interval updates and kind of what my thoughts are. Um, I think the no-till system works really really well and it's mainly because like you saw earlier there there's still moisture in this sand after two or three weeks of 90 plus degree heat wind sun intense i mean if i had rototilled there would be no moisture in the soil nothing would have germinated so so number one experiment the no-till part i'm way ahead now because i'm doing no-till because things germinated in mid-August in this sandy food plot. So that puts me way ahead. Otherwise, I would have had to wait until the rain. We got uh, about an inch of rain over the last couple of days just now here on September 11th right now. So, um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, th then the, the uh, second experiment is the grain drill itself and how did it do getting the seed into the soil? So that is, um, I think it did a pretty decent job if I sit here and look. Um, if I look across the grain of, the, of what was planted, eh, it looks a little messy. But when I get, and I look right down the grain where each of the rows of seed were planted, I see green in every single row. So I mean, it did pretty well and it looks to me if I were to guess right now, I would say there's seed in 
80% of the field, you know, 80% of the places that a disc went over, there's seed that got germinated. 20%, there's nothing germinated in those spots. And I think that those spots, if I sit here and look real close, the, the thatch is really heavy on those spots. And it's like the grain of the thatch is across the direction that the disc was going. So if the disc was going like this, the thatch is laying this way, so the disc has to cut through that, those stalks of the thatch laying on there. And uh, it didn't do that everywhere. And I think some of the spots is because, if I look here a little closer, there's a little dip in the, uh, just a little dip in the land right there. And so maybe the disc just didn't have enough down pressure to, to get through it right there. So yeah, that's what I'm looking at right here. That's what happened. But then you go, you know, 10 feet up right here and it's still really thick and it did get through it. So I think it might be the undulation. So that travel on those DRL 30 or DRL 72 discs, I said in my review of that, go back and look at that video, that there wasn't a lot of travel in the discs. And that might be one of the reasons we're not getting better germination in here, you know, closer to 100% germination or planting everywhere. So that might be why I kind of like the older used uh, drills, you know, old John Deere, old McCormick's, because they have a lot more travel in those discs so they can stay in contact with the soil no matter how much the undulations are throughout the food plot. But anyway, but it still did a decent job. I mean, it looks like we're gonna have, I mean, we've got stuff coming up. I mean, I see all the greens right here. I see some, I don't know if that's buckwheat or what that is, peas, brassicas. Yeah, there's definitely all kinds of stuff in here. So, so it is growing. I'm satisfied right now. Am I 100% convinced that I would suggest to somebody with light sandy soils to use a green drill, a DR, especially a Tar River green drill? I'm not 100% right now, but I think there are things that I can do to improve what's going on here. And it's not like it's bad, but if it can get better, what can we do to make it better? I think the biggest thing to, to getting the green drill to plant better, as I'm sitting here walking around, would be number one, get a roller crimper instead of mowing. Because if you have a roller crimper, you can control the direction that all of the thatch falls. Like when you're mo rolling over the, the wheat or the rye or whatever it is, you can perfectly control the direction that that stuff falls. And then that drill will drill between those stalks, no problem. It'll do a really good job of that. So no more mowing, because mowing just throws everything in all different directions and makes it harder for the drill to get through. So roller crimper would be one thing, or if from now on I planted stuff that was not real heavy and I had better control of the weeds, which is why I mowed this year because the weeds were out of control, then what I think I could do is instead of a roller crimper, you wouldn't have to purchase that, you just take the drill and drill through everything while it's standing. Again, not big corn, not big sorghum kind of stuff, but if you just have smaller rye and clover and that kind of stuff, I think you could just drill through that just as it stands. And then if you feel like knocking it over or mowing after that, you could do that afterwards because that way the soil underneath will be kind of open. There won't be a lot of thatch on it. And those drill, that drill will drill right through all that stuff, no problem. So that's kind of my takeaway right now. So I'll keep doing an update. I'm not sure that I need to do a full update like this one. Um, you know, I mean, the stuff is growing, but I guess maybe I'll just kind of keep you updated enough, you know, when I think it's worth you taking a couple of minutes to look at it to see how it's coming. I'll throw an update up there, but it is getting to be hunting season right now. I got to get off of this property. I don't want to be out here right now because I'm stinking it up and I'm, there might be something bedded right here and I'm spooking them, but getting some decent game camera pictures. Some bucks are moving in now. Uh, half, of, half of them probably have the velvet off right now. So um, I want to get out of here. And so I'm in the food plot right now. I'll, I'll just show you this real quick a second. I'm in the food plot right now where I've got the blind right there back behind me, that redneck blind right there. And um, there's a water hole right there and a game camera over it. So here's a few pictures of some of the bucks that are starting to come in there right now. That's why I got to get out of here. All right. Good luck to you guys. We'll be in touch.